Hi Stillwater folks, uh, Wes Penny here. Going to be doing a little tying demo on a chronomid uh, for the start of our Cabin Fever Academy. And thanks to Deb Pascal and Jay Spencer for the work that they do and time uh, that goes into this. Um, so I'm going to do a blended thread chronomid um, using text-free midge thread just to highlight it and show you how easy it is to use again. Um, so we'll start off, I'm using a Firehole 718 hook and a, fa or a 332 bead, 2.3 millimeter. So like usual, just slide your bead on to the, uh, to the hook and uh, we'll tie in some gills. One of the things I wanted to mention is something that will, if you're not already doing this, will really, really improve and uh, change your tying is to use um, the proper thread. So Techstream has a thread called Power Thread. Uh, this is a small, so you can see it's only 50 denier. Um, the Semperfly Nano Silk is is just about the same, but these are very, very thin diameter threads. They're super strong for the purposes of fly tying. Um, so it'll help you to keep your, your build up, your thread wraps really, really small and will make your chronomids look better in the long run. So that's what I'm using. And we'll start with that, and we'll just do a few th thread wraps to get started. And then for the gills, I'm going to use some uni stretch, which is pretty common. So if you cut a small piece and wrap it around your thread, then bring it up to the eye, as close as you can to the eye with a couple of wraps, just to secure it, bring it forward and catch the back piece. A couple of wraps, nice and tight. We'll finish that. Now you can slide your bead up, get it nice and tight up over the little knot and cut your uni stretch off about the same length as the bead. So just above the eye hook. And we're gonna reattach the thread Trim it off, and I'm going to tie in some um, flasher boot, and I'm using um, 6917, which is a really nice dark copper um, color. So it's not the bright copper; it's dark bronze almost. And I'm going to be tying this in a kind of a gray with the copper rib, which has always been my favorite chronomid pattern and one I've done the best on. Um, so we'll tie that in, just catch it in behind the bead. Now if you spin out your thread, this is that power thread, so you get it nice and flat. You'll see as you wrap down the hook, the buildup, I mean, there's no thread ridges. It slides right up into place as you wrap down. Um, it's really easy to use and really nice to use. Then we'll come back up and we're going to tie in a length of small black wire. So catch your wire on the far side of the of the hook from you. Your, your angle on the camera is looking down onto the um, the hook so it just makes it a little easier to kind of see how I'm doing that. So wrap it right onto the side. Again, spin out your thread, get it flat. Now if you hold your wire up at a bit of an angle as you tie, that'll keep that wire in place along the side. Otherwise it has a tendency to go underneath the hook and you'll end up with your body being out of shape and it'll be a lot harder to keep the profile. So wrap right down and then come back up. So you can see on there, there's almost no buildup of thread and the wires right down along the side. So we'll tie that off. And we're gonna switch over to the midge thread. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a red butt. And the other advantage to using the power thread, which is white, and I use it in probably 80% of my tying, um, is you can just use markers to color it um, rather than switching threads. So I'm just going to give a little dab of 
red at the bottom here. So the, the midge thread by Textream is a kind of a textured fibers. If you look at it, hopefully you can see on here that it's a whole bunch of small fi fibers um, together. And the nice thing about it is they also lay extremely flat, but you can flare it out to do some blending with it. So this is the gray. It's a, it's quite a light gray. We'll get that started. One thing with this stuff is it really doesn't like the hook point because of the way these thread fibers are. If you catch one, it'll fray pretty easily. And then you got to do a bit of cleanup. Um, so once you're tied in, if you bring your bobbin up and just loosen it a bit, you'll be able to see that it's flared out quite a bit. So now you can wrap and lay it pretty flat. So we're going to go all the way down. And when I get down to the red butt, I'm going to spin it just to make sure that it's nice and flat. So I'm going to cover that a little bit with some of the fibers. So bring it around so it's loose. And then we'll go back up into tying it. Um, the way I like to do blended bodies is to use the bottom color, your first color, so it'll be the light gray here, to build up your body. Um, if you try and build it up <clears throat> with your last thread, you're not going to be able to get the blending that you really want because you're going to be using too much of that to cover it. So always build your body with your f first thread. So I'm just trying to get it to lay flat here. So you can actually see when you spin it out that it's nice and flat. Let's do a few more turns. I tend not to go all the way up to the bead. I always leave a little gap because it's going to be your, your points where you tie off and bring the other materials up. So leave yourself a bit of space. You can always fill it in later, but you can't make the room later. Okay, so that gives me kind of the profile that I want. I'm going to tie that off. A couple of turns. I just need a second to switch over my bobbin here. <clears throat> so use the um, the darker gray. And this is called an iron blue dun. It's a really nice color. Get that started with a few turns. Spin it out, make sure we got it nice and loose. You can see how it's all flared out. And we're going to go right into doing the thread blending. So I'm just going to keep bringing. So as I come up over the hook, I just keep it nice and loose, let it flare out, and then bring it down and up. And you can bring it, I'll bring it right down to the end here. The closer you get to the to the, the bend, it'll start to tighten up on you again. So just loosen up. Give it a counterclockwise spin to loosen it up even more as you come back up. And I just keep kind of going back and forth with it. And that's probably pretty good. So as we come up, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll start to make it a little darker. You kind of transition into the darker color. Right about there. This thread tends to darken quite a bit when you put resin on it. 
Um, so keep that in mind when you're wrapping. And you'll, I mean, if you use it, you'll learn pretty quickly that it, how much it darkens and how much you should use. So now I'm going to go back to my power thread. Um, the one thing I do here is I put a bit of resin on the top of the body at this point. And there's a couple of reasons for it. Um, one is that when you go to wrap your flashaboo, it'll slide into place when you wrap it over top of the resin. If you just did it on the thread body, it will catch. And it's a little easier to get it to go into, into position right next to the wire if you can slide it on the resin. I also do some resin segmentation on my patterns now, and um, you kind of need to have the smooth body to do that, so there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, but it'll also give you an idea right away um, on, the, uh, on how it darkens. So the red marker pops with the resin on it. Give that a quick cure. So you can see it's got some nice uh, markings from the dark gray. It's a little bit, uh, um, what do you call it, striped variegated. So it's not all one solid color. So we'll wrap the wire. Get the flash out of the way. Come around and kind of catch into the red there. Now one of the things you can do, if you don't, if, if you use a rotary vise, then this will help you if you just wrap by hand and you come on your own. But if you hold your wire at an angle and then wrap, did I get that right? Two, four, nope, I gotta go a little back a little bit. But generally what, what happens is you can, when you hold it in place, and don't move your hand, just use the vise. It'll kind of space it out evenly on its own. So we've got three, four, five, six. I'm still not enough here. <clears throat> there we go. That's better. And we'll wrap the wire in. it off okay so now we'll get the flashaboo and bring it around so it's into that very first wire wrap now as you bring it over you'll see that as I just move it slides right in against the wire. See, so it's up there, and as you turn, it'll slide back against the wire. So even if you can't see very well with it, you'll know that it's in place just because it slides. One of the important things with tying in general is if you're not happy with the look that you have with what you've done unwrap unwrap and go and do it again don't be impatient um, it's easy to t take material off you know at, at the time um, so, so just take your time with it and and always go back and correct any mistakes so that finish is basically the tying Clean everything up and uh, now I'll take a marker so these are sharpies so it's kind of an orange color and I'm just gonna hold it on the white thread and let the thread soak all the ink up I'm not actually even hardly moving the uh, 
the marker. Just let it draw it all in. We'll go back and get some some resin. I'm using Golf Thin Man. There it is. It's a nice watery resin. Um, you don't have to use very much. We'll just put it right over top of the marker and thread. One of the things I do is I put my resin on my thumbnail, as you can see. So when I'm when I'm applying stuff. Um, I have it on my th nail right here, so I don't have to reach for it. I can just take it off and use my, rest your hand on the vise, and you can just balance everything, and then you can kind of be pretty pinpoint um, with your resin work. Okay, so that's pretty much tied. Um, now what you could do at this point is apply your coating, whether you use resin or Sally's, um, anything you want to put on there, super glue, and uh, finish it off. I like the darker uh, kind of bronze flash of blue because um, it's not quite as bright, but it still looks really nice. So that would be the completed fly. I'm going to spend a bit of time and put some resin segmentation on there. Um, you don't need to stick around and watch this, but I'm going to do it if anybody's interested. Um, so we'll go into doing a bit of that. It's a little trick here that was given to me by Jay Spencer. Um, we were talking about resins and um, came up with this brilliant idea about tinting resins using markers. So this is Golf Classic. So it's a medium viscosity. It's kind of an ordinary clear resin. And I'm gonna use a black marker and a little bit of um, black resin, which is the Black Magic from Golf. And I just want just a tiny little dab of black. And the marker. So you can see I have a dab of clear resin, a little bit of black, and a black marker. And I'm going to scribble the marker. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see this on there. There we go. So I'm going to scribble the marker next to the resin, get it nice and wet on a piece of aluminum foil so it won't dry or absorb really quick. And then take the resin and slide it over and mix it with the ink from the marker. So it'll come out a very dark purple, a little bit bluish purple, uh, which is a really nice color to use, but I want it to be a little bit darker than that. So I'm gonna take just a dab, just a little, little bit of black and add it in there. Get it all mixed up. So you can do this with any color marker. I use dark olive a lot, uh, red, browns. You just do this and add it to the clear resin and you can custom color um, your resins and get different shades and it can really change some of your patterns. So you can see I've got this, now this blackish um, clear resin. So we're gonna take just a dab on the end of a bodkin. You can see I have very little, about the size of a pinhead. Elevate your fly a little bit in the in the uh, vise, and you're gonna take the resin and you're gonna put it just in front of the wire. So dab it just in front of the wire. You don't wanna go past the wire, but just in front, and then bring it down on the sides, come around the other side, and just draw it down along the wire. And we're just gonna work our way down. 
You have plenty of time to do this. Don't panic with resins. They don't flow that fast. And as you go down the hook, you want to use a little less. So your segments get smaller towards the bottom. So you use a little bit less resin. So again, just bring it down both sides. And we'll do the last one with just a tiny bit of resin. And then if you have a look at it right from a side profile, you can see if any of your segmentation is too high or you don't have enough resin, you can add a little bit to adjust it. And I'm going to add one more at the very front here. Uh, where's my light? Gonna cure that. You can see with the light on it, kind of what it looks like. Power just went out. Cool. Well, that's nice. <clears throat> okay, we'll I'll have a look at it this way. So what I'll do to finish it off is I'll take that clear Thin Man resin again, and I'll go on the underside and just clean up in there and put some between uh, the ribs underneath. Not very much, just enough to coat it and make it shiny. And uh, that'll finish it off. So, you know, it takes a little bit more time to add that, but it has a nice look. Otherwise, um, you know, the midge th thread is amazing thread. It lays extremely flat. You can flare it out, you can blend it. Um, ah, power, it's really easy to use. So while we're back on power, let's finish this off. So I'm just gonna add this underneath and move it along. And just kind of rub it between the ribs. The felt pens give you a bit of a hot spot under the UV light. They kind of get quite bright, which is not a bad thing. And there you go. So the profile stays nice and slim um, because of the materials we've used, making every wrap count. Don't wrap any more than you have to. Flatten out your thread and uh, you know, just keep practicing. It's so anyway, I hope that helps a few people, and you, and uh, that'll be it for Cabin Fever Academy. Take care.